This is Covering the Spread, part of the FanDuel Podcast Network. We have waited long enough. It is finally time to break down the 2022 college football playoff semifinals. TCU versus Michigan, Ohio State versus Georgia. We're going to break down both those games from a betting perspective. Get Ed Feng's read on both those and let you know where to find the value over at FanDuel Sportsbook. This is covering the spread right here on the FanDuel Podcast Network and NumberFire.com. My name is Jim Sonis. I am a senior writer and analyst for NumberFire.com. Joined here, as mentioned, by Dr. Dr. Ed Feng, find his work at thepowerrank.com and check him out on Twitter at the Power Rank and Ed. Massive, massive, really fun week in college football this week. How are you doing today? I'm doing well. Pretty excited about the semifinal games and what's going to happen. And uh, yeah, we also have a lot of interesting bowl games as well. I feel like it, it's because like bowl season has become the NFL preseason. <laughs> you know, you have to research all these personnel yeah. angles and who's playing and who's transferring and who entered the transfer portal but yep. didn't transfer? Like Austin Reed at Western Kentucky. Yeah. Uh, so it's a whole new. It's a whole new. Grayson ballgame. McCall last night. Yeah. Grayson McCall last night playing. Yeah. Uh, so we knew that, right? We yeah. knew he was going to transfer and then right. still and play. play in this game, and yeah. then he almost breaks his neck. Was it worth it? You know, that's always kind of the the question. And like, I think if you look at my like Twitter search history, every single one is like skill position guys in bowl games because i'm playing some like dfs for the for the bowl season and like i'm just like paranoid that i'm gonna have a guy who like transferred or is out because of injury or something like that it's like every single like tweet that or thing that i searched on twitter is some person's name because i'm just paranoid about missing something there yeah yeah exactly so yeah i know i feel like there's probably a lot of betters betting on the on these games just because it's it's not yeah you know like a lot of these games like the numbers mean less right fortunately they mean more for these semifinal games that we'll talk about today yeah but you know there's a lot of things to figure out right i i kind of think um you know it's also interesting too uh you know tanner morgan from minnesota has been hurt but kind of looks like he's going to be back for this game the market's moved pretty heavily towards minnesota almost a 10 point favorite now and he also signed up to play in an all-star uh one of these senior bowl games on january 14th which suggests that he's on the mend and yeah. and going to play. So, so there's a lot of interesting things going on there as well. Well, I think that you talked about how betters might be more heavily invested in these bowl games because they're um, they are you know information based, and that kind of goes back to. I was listening to uh, the deep dive podcast with Drew Dinzik and Andy Molitor during NFL right. preseason. They were like, yeah, like this is the best time to bet because mm-hmm. it's so information heavy. If you're plugged in, if you've got people who like, you know, if you've got good information, you can be very profitable. So right. personally, that's not my strength, which means I'm better suited sitting out, you know, sure. you know, watching these games, playing some DFS and kind of just enjoying them. But if you are a serious person who has like information i think it's got to be like a really good time for you given the advantages you have potentially over the books and not situations we get very often outside of like you mentioned the nfl preseason but also uh, these bowl games yeah absolutely i mean there's there's a lot of information to dig up you know who who is usc's backup quarterback what can he do things like that Exactly. So we're going to mention the games you talked about. Uh, talk about those semifinals, break down Ed's thoughts on those and get you ready for a fun Saturday in just a bit. But first, a reminder to make sure you are subscribed to Covering the Spread wherever you get your podcast. Three shows this week are NFL Week 17. First look is up, broke down where my numbers are showing value this week and my power rankings entering Week 17. That is up on the FanDuel YouTube page and on the Covering the Spread podcast feed. And then tomorrow, Austin Slam or Tal Vecchio will be with me to break down NFL Week 17, a full preview of this week's biggest games. Get that by subscribing to Covering the Spread wherever you get your podcasts. Looking to get more out of this NFL season? Well, now is the perfect time to download FanDuel, America's number one sportsbook, because new customers get a no-sweat first bet up to $1,000. That's free bets back if your first bet doesn't win. Just download the FanDuel Sportsbook app. It's safe, secure, and super easy to use. Then you can bet on everything from the money line to touchdown scores and over under yardage plus FanDuel even lets you combine your bets for a chance at a bigger payout with a same game parlay so don't miss a chance to get your no sweat first bet up to one thousand dollars in free bets when you join FanDuel make every moment more with FanDuel an official sports betting partner of the NFL 
Must be 21 plus in president select states. First online real money wager only. A refund issued as non withdrawable free bets that expire in 14 days. Restrictions apply. See terms at sportsbook.fanduel.com. Gambling problem? Call 1 800 Gambler or visit fanduel.com slash RG. In Arizona, 1 800 Next Step or text Next Step to 53342. In Connecticut, 1 888 789 7777 or visit ccpg.org slash chat. In Indiana, 1 800 9 with it. In Canada, Kansas and Wyoming, 1-800-522-4700 in Kansas, ksgamblinghelp.com in Louisiana, 1-877-770-STOP in Maryland, mdgamblinghelp.org in New York, 1-877-8-HOPE-NY or text hope Y or in West Virginia, go to 1-800-GAMBLER.net. Let's dig in here to Saturday's games. And before we talk about the games specifically, I want to talk to you about more what we've learned so far from past iterations of the college football playoff, because we've had eight years of data to this point, the ninth edition coming up on Saturday. When you look back at those other years, and this can be something you've dug into yourself, like from a numbers perspective, or just what you've kind of noticed uh, anecdotally from betting these games, watching these games, what stands out to you that you're carrying over this week as lessons for the college football playoffs? When I looked over the college football playoff era, it it was kind of shocking. You know, this is the first year that uh, we'll have a playoff without both Alabama and Clemson. Yeah. And I think the consequence of that is that, you know, you're probably going to get some pretty competitive semifinal games. No Alabama versus Michigan State. I don't remember what the line was in that game, but I do remember the score was pretty lopsided. Um, yeah. So, I mean, it's, it's interesting from that perspective perspective you know i mean alabama and clemson have so dominated college football but i think both those programs have some questions you know like you know nick saban's had you know just a plethora of recruiting uh nfl caliber wide receivers and then all of a sudden this year he he has to hit the transfer portal for those skill player which which was really strange clemson's has its problems the offense has been pretty bad uh changes with the defensive coordinator and that unit wasn't quite as good this year as well so you know they still won the they still won the acc they're 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 still a good football program it it it, but it's a big question whether they're going to be one of these elite programs right um so yeah it's a little it's it's a little bit different you know we have what a spread of six and a half and seven and a half uh you know in these semifinal games i I, I didn't look specifically, but, but, it but you know, I'm going to argue later that one of those games should be even more competitive than that. I think we are going to get some pretty competitive semifinal games. Um, and, and the final should be good too. I think I'm going to have, I, I mean, at least my numbers are going to have the spread in that final. What, what I think the final, assuming that Michigan gets there, it's going to be pretty tight. Um, so yeah, it should be a competitive playoff. I think that's the first thing. And then, you know, I mean, we're kind of on like two games away from, you know, putting Georgia in, you know, the, the, the dominant position in college football, having been back-to-back national champs. And they, they will also have kind of upended college football in another way, you know, winning two uh, college football playoffs with Stetson Bennett, who is a great college quarterback, but not one with a ton of pro potential mm-hmm. for whatever dumb reason that might be. Um you know, like there, there's kind of been this argument that you need to have not just a good quarterback, but a quarterback, uh, the caliber of the first pick in the NFL draft to win a national championship. And, you know, the, the exception to that rule was, you know, like the Cardell Jones of Ohio State, right. in the very first college football playoffs. And yes, we have to talk about Jacob Coker as well for Alabama. But if you look at who's won over the long haul, it's, it's been the Joe Burrows and the Cam Newtons and uh, the Trevor Lawrence's and, and players of that Tua. caliber. Yeah. And so, you know, if we have back-to-back Stetson Bennett championships, um, you know, I mean, every season is a little bit different, but um, you know, maybe, maybe it was, maybe it was a little bit, a little bit too crazy that it was that, that kind of streak of, of number one draft picks at quarterback. Um, but it is the most important position and, and it'll be interesting to see kind of how that narrative changes. But anyways, those are kind of the two big takeaways looking over. I mean, where is it going to be our ninth year of the college football playoff? Yeah, you were talking about the competitiveness and uh, Ben Stevens of Sports Grid, a guy we've had on the show plenty, he tweeted earlier today mm-hmm. talking about the average margin of victory in the semifinals is 21.03 points. That's massive. And yeah. I do think that we should see some at least one pretty good game here on Saturday. So let's talk about those games. Maybe we get two. Let's get your read on TCU versus Michigan first. Right now, Michigan, a seven and a half point favorite over at FanDuel Sportsbook. Total for that game is 58 and a half. And 
Ed, obviously you are super tuned into Michigan. TCU is a team we talked about on almost every show this year, it seemed like, because they were always in very tight games, but they obviously pulled through in almost every single one of those. So when you look at this game, what stands out to you from a betting perspective? Yeah, I mean, I I, I kind of think the market has had TCU correct all year. Uh, my numbers have Michigan closer to a nine-point favorite, but I'm not particularly interested in betting the side here. Um for said reason, I think the markets have been spot on with with TCU. You know, I mean, they were what a seven point underdog to Texas. They were a couple point favorite against Kansas State in the in the in the uh, in the Big Twelve championship game. I think both those numbers were spot on. I, I think this number is pretty spot on. I might get a little bit interested if it goes down to seven, but I don't really think that's going to happen. Uh, I think this is a pretty good matchup for Michigan. Um, I think they do take care of business. And um, yeah, they, they should uh, they should march on into the, the championship game. Total is 58 and a half. Any read for you on that? Yeah, it's it's interesting. I mean, I think, you know, when you think about World Cup games and they kind of tend to get tight and like the probability of lower scoring, uh, you know, they're just you can see the markets favoring lower scoring games. There's got to be a little bit of that here. You know, my numbers are my numbers like the over in both the semifinal games. I'm not sure if I like either one of them. Um, you are going to tend to be a little bit more cautious in that game. I think that does happen in American sports um, as well. So, yeah, no, I mean, I, I, I'm not, I'm not too interested. Uh, yeah, in the over, I think there is a little bit of conservativeness there, and and we'll see what happens. Okay, so we talked, uh, this would have been a couple weeks ago, you mentioned that we can dig into player props for these games. Yeah. And actually, you go to FanDuel Sportsbook, and they've got everything up. Uh, you know, individual player props, a lot of different markets. So yeah. a lot of ways to attack this game. Any value for you in those markets, Ed? Yeah, for sure. I, anytime you have a guy like Donovan Edwards in Michigan that has had two absurd games the last two games. Against Ohio State, he broke the two long runs near the end of the game to really put that game away. Uh, he had another big game against Purdue in the Big Ten championship game. And anytime you get those types of performances, you're going to see a big, big number when you look at his rushing yards. And oh golly, do we have a big number? I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna. Uh, over at DraftKings, it's it's 136 and a half. Wow, rushing yards. <laughs> I don't really bet a ton of these rushing yard props, but that seems like an absurdly high number. And you know, you you can certainly make the argument that that's reasonable. He got 25 carries against Purdue, and if like you know, you, he's averaged seven and a half for the year. But if you only assume that he averages six, he's still probably going to get there. Um, but that's an absurd number. Um, I like the under there. Uh, I'm pretty sure FanDuel had it like at 100, 125 and a half. Yeah, which I, which I also thought was absurd, but right, that's 10 yards lower than another sports book. So I'm I'm right. clearly going to the other sports book there. Um. Yeah, it's just a big number, and it's something that yeah. you expect. And and the big reason is it's not it's not like I don't think Donovan Edwards is capable of, of it, and I and I do think that Michigan's capable of breaking those big runs, and they have all year. But there is a big random element in those explosive plays. Um, you know, it's just one. You know, it's 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 hard to have all eleven guys working together to break open a, a perfect play, and and there, there's a big random element that that my data analysis and stuff that Bill Connolly has done has shown. And it's, it's, it's just, you have to break, you have to break some big plays to get right. to 136 and is he capable? Sure. But I'm going to bet the under, I mean, you're talking about medians versus ceiling or average. And I think that's a big, the key thing there with those big plays is they can boost your average, but the median is still, it takes more to boost yeah. that median. And like, we talk a lot about how, the big advantage in player props is you're going to get more discrepancy from one book to the next, but nine yards. I know the percentage wise is different because it's such a big number, but like nine yards difference from one book to the next is, or I guess 11. Um, Cause it's 136. 11. Yeah. Yeah. 11 yards is nuts. Like that's I, I, yeah. borderline unprecedented. I think. <laughs> I, I don't know. I, I, I will. Um, I mean, that number was available on DK this morning. I, I yeah. know that. I bet it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if that's still up there, but like, even if it's like a spread of eight yards, like, yeah, you know, that's and nice. you know, and, and those two books were the ones that did have these rushing totals up. Yeah. Uh, I think some of the other books are, you know, will have them up a little bit later, but um, that seems like an absurdly high number. I mean, it, it, it's kind of the perfect, 
confluence, right? I mean, I yeah. remember, bet, you know, Raheem Mostert had an insane game in the NFC Championship game a couple right. years ago, went to the Super Bowl against KC, had a really high total. And, it, it, you know, it's just the same idea, right? You have a big game because you break some explosive plays, like bet the under in the next game. That worked out. Right. Uh, I hope this works out as well. If it doesn't, then, you know, Michigan's probably pretty likely to win if, if Donovan Edwards uh, has uh, over 136 yards. So, so I'd be happy there too. Right. Exactly. Happy regardless. If it does get to seven, would that be enough? Because we've seen a lot of late movement in these, these big games. Uh, they're very public. You know, we'll see a lot of money come in day of and stuff like that. So we've seen late movements. If it gets to seven, would that be enough where you would bite? Or do you think you want to just live with the player props in this game? Yeah, I'll have fun with the player plots. I got a lot yeah. of other emotional stuff right on this game too. <laughs> so like, but but I do think there would be some value at yeah. seven. You remember this? I mean, this game started at like nine and a half. Yeah. And so we've seen it drop two points. I think that's, I don't think it's going to drop anymore, but if it right. does, I, I, I would suggest some value on Michigan. Okay. Well, let's shift focus to a game you've talked about already a bit and liking to bet here. That is Ohio State versus Georgia. The spread in this one is Georgia minus six and a half. Total is 62 and a half right now at FanDuel Sportsbook. And when we talked two weeks ago, you liked Ohio State plus six and a half. And obviously not everybody listening today was listening back then. So I want to go back to that and get your thoughts on why you like that number. And, and then any thoughts for you on the total as well while we're here. Yeah, I, I, I think, I think people are kind of overreacting to what happened to Ohio State versus Michigan. Mm -hmm. um, Ohio State lost, and they ended up losing pretty badly uh, in the final stages of that game. However, they did, they were more successful in that game uh, in, in terms of success rate. And I would still argue, like, like think about these four teams, right? Which team has the best quarterback? Ohio State. I'm Which team has got the best set of receivers? Ohio State. I mean, I don't, I don't, I don't think there's much of an argument there, and I, I still think Ohio State has the best offense uh, in in the country, and 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 maybe not the best offense statistically, but certainly the best, the highest ceiling. When you're talking about a guy, a quarterback who might be one of the top two picks in the draft, you have multiple receivers that will probably end up in the league as well. And and just the program that has really done it on that side of the ball, and and it, they did it against Michigan too, right? They had almost 500 yards in that game, uh, had some opportunities late, uh, turnover bug bit them, and they weren't able to cut into that lead. But that that doesn't mean they weren't able to move the ball. Um, this is a really good offense. I think there's a lot of overreaction to to what happened in that Michigan game, and again, the explosive plays. There's a big random element in that as well. Michigan was able to take advantage of that, but. Is that going to happen again? Maybe, but 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 maybe not. Ohio State's defense has been, you know, for the most part, really good this year. Um, and I, I can see them having a pretty good, decent game against Georgia. You know, I bet this Ohio State plus seven. I think there's a lot of value there. And I honestly really kind of think it's 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 like, you know, you kind of saw with your eyes what happened <laughs> with yeah. Ohio State versus Michigan. And I think a lot of people, especially in Ann Arbor, really think that's going to happen again. And you just kind of have to remember that there's kind of a big random component to those explosive plays. Ohio State still has the best offense in this playoff. And it's, um, you know, things could be a lot different. It's interesting, too, the ripple effect of having one of those games being like the most watched college football game of the year, where yeah. you see the impact on the Donovan Edwards rushing prop, which is also like partly due to Blake Corum stuff. So like that makes sense there, but also it ripples into this Ohio state versus Georgia game, potential ripples into like the championship markets as well. Having that one big game on a massive, yeah. massive stage and how layered the reaction to that one game can be, especially when, like you were saying that, that the reaction to it is so dependent on breaking off big plays, which is not something we could, you know, reliably project and predict going forward. Right. Exactly. It, it, you said it perfectly, right? It's really hard to say, oh, these explosive plays happen. So they're going to happen again. Mm -hmm. I think that that's the big thing. And um, yeah, when you just kind of look at that, I mean, Ohio State has to, to go up in in your mind. And, and I think they're going to be competitive in this game. And Georgia probably wins this game. But, you know, I don't be surprised at all if Ohio State kicks a late field goal and, and steals it. So you mentioned Ohio State's defense being, you know, fine in the situation. Total 62 and a half. That's that's high for sure. Mm. What do you think about that 
total. You mentioned your numbers showing value. Is it similar to the TCU Michigan game where you're staying away despite that? Yeah, probably. I mean, you have to have a pretty healthy respect for what Georgia does on the defensive side of the ball. Um, There's going to be some NFL stars on that side. Sorry, NFL players on that side of the ball. Um, They're pretty good. Can they slow down Ohio State? Sure, sure they can. Uh, I'm probably staying away uh, from the over. Okay. Let's go to the player props here as well. We talked about the Donovan Edwards one for the uh, Michigan game. What are you seeing for Ohio State versus Georgia? Yeah, you know, not as much. A lot of these totals were like in respectable range. So, so me and Williams looks like he uh, he he was banged up in the game against Michigan, but it looks like he's healthy. He's ready to go. A very reasonable rushing total somewhere in the 60s or something like yeah, that. 66 and a half right now at FanDuel. Um, you know, they don't have Travion Henderson, who's their first choice at running back. But me and Williams had more yards per carry <laughs> this year. So, um you know, I'm not sure there's there's much of a drop off there. Uh, again, like you would expect your top running back to have a rushing total somewhere somewhere south of 100. That's where it is. So uh, I'm not really seeing a ton of value there. It's just not the the kind of the confluence of events to to put a rushing total in the 130s like like it is in the other game. Yeah, it could be a situation where you, if you really feel good about Ohio State plus six and a half, maybe that entices you to take the mine or mine Williams number uh, again, six, six and a half right now over at FanDuel Sportsbook. You kind of make the assumption of, okay, they keep this game close, neutral script throughout. They can run uh, Williams later on. I think that the one I want to see later on is if we get a CJ Stroud rushing number posted at some point, because right. we talked about that earlier on where in the Northwestern game where there was heavy wind and it was a, they had to run to get the offense cooking. He did run that. He doesn't run very often, but I think that's when I would check out later on, see if we get a, a Stroud rushing prop posted. Sure. Cause I think that could be interesting. It's not a guarantee he does it cause he doesn't like to run. I think he actively does not want to, but I would check that out if it does get posted because that could be a route for Ohio state changing things up. If they do struggle at any point offensively. Yeah. I think, I think that's a really good point. I, I think I would like a Stroud, rushing total i think i saw a, a jj mccarthy rushing total at 16 and a half which is which yeah. is what it was at in the ohio state game right i like that less against tcu because there's a lot of game scripts where michigan's in control and they don't sure. need to run their quarterback i think it's more likely that stroud has to run just yeah you know whether georgia's defense has a good game or whether they're down or whether you just need to pick up some plays so if they you know if they had something like stroud at 16 and a half um Cause I mean, cause he's capable. Yeah. And if he does, I think even if he doesn't like to run, I think that goes out the window when you're in the national semifinal game Exactly. and you need a first down and you, and right. you need to move the ball. Yeah. McCarthy finished with 27 in that game against Ohio state. And that's again with the sack yardage, all that uh, being factored think, in as well. Yeah, no. So I think he had more if you take out the sack yards. Um, right. Right. And I believe that the sack yards don't count. Okay. If the, if that's, like they don't count towards those quarterback rushing totals. Okay. Uh, that so, helps yeah. a lot because that's yeah. <laughs> scary against Georgia uh, for sure. But I think that's the route I'd be looking at in terms of props to that game is seeing what Stroud opens up at and deciding is the fair number under the assumption he may run a bit more with it being a higher leverage game. Now, of course, Ed, it's not just the semifinals uh, happening this weekend. You can also still dabble in the futures market. That's still up for you right now. And a big inflection point coming up on Saturday where markets will change drastically. And we talk about that, how we want to bet prior to inflection points if we can predict the way things will break. So are you seeing any value there in the futures market before Saturday's games? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I, I, uh, the funniest thing about that Ohio state Michigan game is that I've now become like the biggest purporter uh, proponent of a betting on Ohio state, but I have a legitimate, like one in three chance that they win the national title. I see really clip my numbers see a really close game against Georgia and Ohio state would be favored against Michigan at this point in the national title game. That could obviously change after the semifinal game, but um, so it's about one in three. I mean, you can get plus 360 on FanDuel for Ohio State to win. I do think there's value there. Um, and for all the reasons mentioned above, for you know, all the analysis, simple analysis of um, you know, who's the best quarterback and who's the best receiving core of those four teams. And then and then also, like, I mean, it's it's been colored a little bit by the Michigan game, but you know, there was a for months, I was pretty certain the Ohio State had made absolutely the right hire for defensive coordinator in Jim Knowles. I mean, the defense had been really good. 
um, for a lot of the year. I think it's a very solid unit. I think they have the right guy, a defensive coordinator. Um, so I think there's value there. Uh, you can probably get a better – I mean, I would shop around. I think you probably yeah. find an even better number than plus 360 out there. Uh, but I do think there's value. Yeah, plus 360, the implied odds there, 21.7%, which means a lot of value. And you got a lot of wiggle room then to be wrong. You know, if the numbers are too high in Ohio State, they have to be pretty wrong for that to not be a value. And I think that's encouraging too. If you want, you want that wiggle room and that is baked in there. And again, it comes back to what we talked about. Ripple effects from a big high profile game that yeah. span to now three yeah. different markets potentially. Yeah. And, and I think there's a lot of similarities uh, to what Georgia went through last year. Sure. So they win sure. in the SEC championship game. They got annihilated by Alabama, but a lot of that was big plays and turnovers, right. uh, turnovers on the Georgia part, big plays on the Alabama part. Uh, Georgia was actually better in that game by success rate. So kind of the same story. So, you know, Georgia comes in the back door and, and uh, um, yeah, they got it done last year. So, I, th I think there are similarities there. Um, and um, yeah, I think there's value. Well, I'd love a rematch between Michigan and Ohio State. I think that'd be a blast as a Big Ten guy. Uh, would love that. So we'll see how things play out on Saturday with two really fun games, hopefully very competitive games as well. That is all that we have here for today on Covering the Spread. But Ed, I uh, want to give you a chance first to plug anything you got going on over at the Power Rank or on the Football Analytics Show. Yeah, check out my free email newsletter at thepowerrank.com. Uh, come out every Saturday with Seven Nuggets Saturday, which is an assorted list of uh, a curated list of tips and news and, and humor. And then I also write about bets that I have made. So check that out at thepowerrank.com. All righty. And find Ed on Twitter at The Power Rank. I am on Twitter at Jim Saunas. We are back once again tomorrow to break down NFL Week 17 with Tom Vecchio getting his full read on this week's biggest games. Also check out our Week 17 first look up on the Covering the Spread podcast feed and the FanDuel YouTube page. We'll talk to you all once again tomorrow. This has been Covering the Spread right here on the FanDuel Podcast Network. 